Today, we take a closer look at how some out-of-bound mechanics work in Super Mario 3D World. You might be wondering what happens if you jump off of the world map. Let's say you have a tree, you climb up it, and you jump off of the world. You start falling, and you spawn back at the first level of World 1. It was really cool to see that the game developers added this mechanic of spawning you back at the first level of a world if you fall off of the world map. And the same thing happens if you do this at World 2. You might be wondering what happens if you remove the first level of a world and then you fall off the map since normally you're supposed to be spawned back at the first level of a world. If you do this and you fall off the map then the game crashes because it tries to respawn you at the first level but there is no first level to respawn you at. If you edit a level so that it's raised up in the air like this at the world map, you also get spawned up in the air right in front of the floating level if you fall off of the world map. And this might be surprising, but you actually have a chance to enter the level when you respawn in front of it in the air like this. If you enter this floating level while you are in the air, it'll look like this. The entire playthrough of the level itself is normal because we haven't edited the level, and here's what happens after you complete the level. If you've already finished this level before, everything works normally, you just drop down and you can continue the game. But if this is your first time completing the level, you fall down and then you respawn back up in front of the level, and then you have your green star count go up as you start falling again, and then the game is stuck in this position. You can't move, you can't pause, the next level doesn't unlock, and there's no music playing, the game is just stuck like this. One more thing to point out about these decorations in the background before we move on. Some of them will push you away as you get close to them, but for a lot of them, you just sink through them if you get into a position where it looks like you're going to stand on it. You might know that all of the world map in this game is connected. I added a custom clear pipe here so that you could use this from the start of the game and you could go between worlds using this pipe. Every time that you first reach a new world, you'll have the cutscene play of the Sprixie at the castle calling out for help. I also added a long pipe that goes all the way from this world here up to Champions Road, and I made it go really fast, so for a moment, you see some strange stuff in the background while we are between worlds before the background loads. If you take this spaceship, Mario is able to go into it even though he doesn't have any green stars or stamps at all. The spaceship goes up, then it comes down, and when it arrives at World Flower, Mario hops out of an invisible spaceship because the ship doesn't appear. A message pops out that says, a new world has appeared. Once you close this prompt, Mario starts falling down, and this is now Super Mario Galaxy 3. After some falling, the planet in the background disappears, and you're just falling through emptiness. But you don't keep falling forever, and eventually you respawn at the first level of World Flower. Something interesting that you don't get to see in regular gameplay is where the Fire Bros hideout levels and other hidden parts of the world map are stored. They're normally put just a bit to the side of the world map where you can't see them. A lot of the time when you take a pipe to another part of the world where you find a toad house or a fire bros hideout, you're being teleported across the world map to one of these areas. And other bonus rooms in the games, like the stamp room in Super Bell Hill that you use a pipe to get to, are often stored to the side of the level, as you can see right here, where the stamp room in Super Bell Hill is kept to the left of the level. When you set the value for gravity to zero, like I did in my zero gravity mod for Super Mario 3D World, pipes behave in an interesting way. Gravity normally brings you back down when you exit a pipe that shoots you out vertically, so if your gravity is zero, you keep floating up forever. And if you use a power-up while you're way up here, this happens. What if we press minus? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my goodness. In World 1-2, Koopa Troopa Cave, you start the level here and you go down this pipe into the cave to continue through the level. As you make your way through the cave, you get to the final pipe, and making your way through the final pipe, you end up in this area here with the goal pole. But let's go back to the beginning of the level. If you take a look at what's behind this wall here, that's actually where the end of the level is stored, behind this. It's not currently possible to jump that far here, and another measure that the game developers took to make sure that nobody can get there is that they added a death barrier here, so you can't sneak past the level using this method. The cloud cannon in Mount Beanpole launches you to a bonus cloud area, and it might not be surprising to hear that the cloud bonus area isn't actually straight above the cloud, it's off to the side here. One funny thing to point out about the cloud cannon is that if you rotate it, 
this ends up happening when you jump into it and you get launched. And we saw this in my video where we made enemies and objects upside down in Super Mario 3D World. In World 1-4, Plessy's Plunging Falls, you might be wondering if you could make it past this gate without Plessy. With some objects, you can't go fast enough to clip through them, but when I set Mario's speed to millions of times as fast, the game would lag like crazy, but Mario still couldn't clip through the fence. But, if you set Mario past the fence, or if you just remove this fence, then he's able to continue down Plessy's Plunging Falls without Plessy. And this gate, just like a lot of walls in games, has collisions set to work only one way. So you could come back to the start of the level, but if you do that, you're not able to make it back out without Plessy. And I learned a very tough lesson about the floor here in my video where I made Plessy's Plunging Falls backwards. After making it all the way back up to the beginning of the level, you can fall like this. In World 1-5 Switch Scramble Circus, these panels that you have to step on are all linked to an invisible panel object that's off to the side. And you might be wondering what happens if you just move this wall aside and continue through the level without activating all the switches. You are able to make it through and continue the level. And some stuff later in the level is connected to the switch that activates when you step on all the panels, so things can get a bit weird. You'll notice that there are no enemies here, and the jump panels are also surprisingly not loaded in. I was really surprised that the jump panels were gone, but you could still stand in their spot normally. But the panels for activating the next door still work normally. I wanted to try moving aside all of the doors so we wouldn't have to use the panels and seeing what would happen, and everything was fine up until this part, where the next part of the level didn't load, so Mario couldn't continue. I had to go back and get all of the panels, and now that this part of the level was loaded in, Mario could continue on, he could climb up, he was ready to go into the final clear pipe to get launched to the last part of the level, and when the clear pipe cannon shot him out, this happened. There was no floor. The floor doesn't load here until you step on all of the panels in the previous room. And for some reason, Mario fell past here and didn't die. There must be no death area here, because Mario can't normally fall here because there's supposed to be ground here when you land. You might be wondering if you could chase Bowser in Bowser's Highway Showdown forever. The short answer is yes, but this honestly deserves its own video. After defeating Bowser in Bowser's Highway Showdown, there's a warp box that spawns here, and you can see that there's a castle in the background. You might be wondering, what if you made Peach float forever? Would you be able to float over to the castle? If you tried to jump to the castle here in Bowser's Highway Showdown, instead of using the warp box, there is a death area here that prevents you from getting to the castle. This made me think of a similar jump that's in World 1-3, Mount Beanpole. You're normally supposed to get from this island in Mount Beanpole to the final island in the background by defeating the piranha plant and using the warp box that spawns. But for some reason, maybe because the jump looked like it would be too far to make normally, this is one spot where the developers didn't actually add a vertical death area, and you can make this jump if you edit the game to jump higher or float longer or have lower gravity, even though in other parts of the game that are similar to this, death areas were added so that you can do something like this. I think it's super interesting to play through a game and make discoveries like this using mods I've made like my Zero Gravity mod or being able to jump higher or float longer, and I've got a lot of other experiments on games on my channel that you might enjoy. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting my content creation, and a big thank you to you for watching this video. Hoping you all have a fantastic day ahead of you, and take care everybody.